man can really do is uh, call a man's attention to God. Uh We're talking about calling us higher. That's actually, it's God who's doing the calling, and it's men, it's men, and he's calling the world to his son, incidentally. And it's men, we, we try to get, uh, call men's attention to God who's doing the calling. God has always done the calling. He called out to Abraham, where art thou? <clears throat> look, look where you're at now. And, uh, and he called the Israelites out of Egypt, called Abraham out of Ur. He called... Uh, Gibeon, he called Jeremiah, he called Ezekiel. If, every, if anything ever got done, if anybody's ever going to get anything accomplished, God's got to do some calling. God's got to call. The truth has some bite to it. <clears throat> I'll, I'll say it this way. The word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, it's not just a bunch of words. God doesn't speak like, like, he, like he likes to hear himself talk, you see. And uh, I don't hardly imagine God is enamored with the sound of his own voice speaking. Like, you know, so then when God speaks, <clears throat> you know, there's long periods of time where God didn't say anything. But yeah. see, when God speaks, it's, in order, it, it's time to get something done, yeah. you see. And the action of God, I apologize for my throat. I thought I was going to do good this morning, but <clears throat> I know it's a pain to listen to. The Word of God, because it's the truth, it often comes to man with a call to action. Okay, because God, God is doing something, and, it, and well, how does it, how's, what's the implications to men then? Well, then it, it comes to men as a call to action. Yeah. It comes to men, it's got some bite. When the men hear it, it's got some bite to it yeah. uh, because it prods men. It, it, it does something. A pe- uh-huh. You know, a preacher, now if he wants some bite, if he wants some teeth in his message, leave the illustrations out yeah. and, and fill it for what God has said. Yeah. Then, you, then you'll, you'll have some bite in it. What Jesus had to say always contained teeth. Okay, if you don't, don't mind me saying it this way, because what when Jesus spoke, <clears throat> he exposed men. He exposed the darkness of men to light, and it and it and it bit them. Uh, <clears throat> while he was a very word of God, you see, clothed in human form, it was actually the very presence of God among men that uh, that. Uh, <clears throat> Disrupted men's plans and sent the demons into frenzy. That the very presence of God, and uh, you know, uh, we we've noticed we can have the same effect in the workplace and places to the degree that we're clothed ourselves in the Word of God. We we can have the same. Now I use the word bite and I use the word teeth on purpose, but <clears throat> the Spirit doesn't speak this way. That's the way men speak. All right, the Word of God is quick and powerful. Yeah. And it says it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Yeah, and uh, it's uh, piercing, okay, yes. piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit yeah. and to the joints and marrow, and it's a discerner of the yeah. thoughts and intents of the heart. Now, that's the way the Spirit describes it. Yeah, <clears throat> this book, this book, the Word of God, is the Word of God in, the, in its physical form, uh-huh. you see. But there's a, there's a Word of God in the Spirit, which it works in the spiritual places of a man. This is what he, this is where the Spirit of God, <clears throat> the Word of God gets into there where it really counts. God's a spirit. <clears throat> and that comes to us. That comes to the saints with much relief. The God is not like men. Uh, the scriptures are clear on this. It just says God is not a man. Uh, he doesn't think like men. And it, br- it brings us, actually brings us a, a, a great deal of comfort to know that God doesn't see as man seeth. Uh-huh. Uh, <clears throat> because men have a tendency to look on the outward appearance. Well, we don't have a tendency. That's all the really way we yeah, can look, on the outward appearance. But see, God looks in at the heart. We already know that the outward appearance of, most often is just a reflection of what we are on the inside. Jesus taught us that. So God looks straight into yeah. a man's heart, right, in, right on the inside. Uh-huh. <clears throat> God, God sees our outward appearance. He sees that. But the point is, God is not restricted to where he can look. He looks right on the inside, <clears throat> right there where the thoughts and intents of the hearts take place. That's, right. That's why, for this reason, <clears throat> this is why God changes the inside of a man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then <clears throat> it's made known on the outside of yeah, us, yeah. the exterior part of us. Uh-huh. That's why it's so critical when we talk about the saints. They, they need to pay attention. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> the, the way they look on the outside 
you know, just to make sure it accurately displays the way you are on the inside. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, if you really don't belong to the world, then refuse to look like them. In, in other words, if you really don't belong here, don't act like you do. And so, <clears throat> you know, this is a real chore. And I want to say something about this, please. I, this is a real chore for the saints, particularly godly women. <clears throat> the world doesn't want people, uh, especially women, to look modest and wholesome. They don't. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it takes a lot of work. For the brethren, the women folk particularly, to find long dresses and skirts and tops that cover up. It really does. And I wanted to say that because I, I, I want to, I want to, how much I appreciate the effort. There's a lot of effort in this. And you know, uh, <clears throat> incidentally, uh, this is on purpose. You know, most of our clothes designers and things like that are not godly and by the belief. So they don't really. <clears throat> but uh, I know that was off track a little bit. But in all of this, brethren, we have God who is not a man, and he certainly cannot receive men. Now, he doesn't go about business like men does. He goes about business like God does. He, he does it like God does things. And he calls men to do, to do like that too. <clears throat> he, can't, he cannot certainly cannot receive men, but yet we have a man who's in glory with him, you see. But he's not the kind of man like we are. That's right. He, he stands out this outside our realm. Amen. He stands out there by himself. He's different. This, this is the man that God receives. Let's talk about this a minute. He is which God gladly receives him. He just don't receive. He gladly receives him. Matter of fact, this man, heaven greatly rejoices in. It's the man Christ Jesus. This man has been received in the glory, and he's been in a high honor. He's been highly exalted. God's made him. He's made this man both Lord and Christ. Now, that means he's our man, you see. God's given him to us. And uh, the angel said, Behold, I bring you good tidings, didn't they, of great joy, which shall be to all people. Jesus Christ, he's God's goodwill to mankind, you see. Now, he personally belongs to us, <clears throat> and we've received him. We have. We've received him great rejoicing, and we rejoice more as we see him. This man, Christ Jesus, now I want to tell you that he so much pleases God. God so fully delights in him that God is satisfied. Listen to this. That he is satisfied to transform all men into his image. <clears throat> people want to know what God is doing. That's what he's doing, yeah. brethren. Uh, all men that come to him yeah. will be conformed yeah. into the image of his son. Amen. Okay, Amen. Jesus Christ, he's the preeminent one, you see, the Holy One of God, yeah. sinless and perfect. Uh -huh. And I repeat, I want to repeat it. He perfectly pleases God so much that everything, you understand this, brother, every day, what one, you know, one day things is not going to be like they were yeah. <clears throat> or like they are now. Uh -huh. Everything's going to be different, yeah. better, they're going to be more glorious, more perfect because Jesus Christ, because God, he, he pleases him to bring all things into one, yeah. into Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Was it right for God to have any type of creation that didn't truly bear his image fully and completely? Well, no, it wasn't. When God gets through, it will. Yeah. <clears throat> In regard to this needed recreation, the saints are God's workmanship, you see. Yeah. This is what God is working yeah. on. We're being fashioned and recreated and the sons of God. Uh, that's just, that's what's going on, brethren. When you belong to God, that's what he's doing. Yeah. The saints are being recreated uh -huh. so that we can be fully received. Now, <clears throat> this leads me to this point, and then we're going to quit with this. The saint, uh, knowing this then, you can see how the saints can never be satisfied or the saints can never survive. They never can be survive unless they're nourished yeah. and sustained on those things that come from heaven. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. The people of God, we need things that are divine, you see, yeah. because we're, we're becoming like him. Mm -hmm. We, we got to have those things that come down from heaven now, you see. The Israelites, now you remember when they were brought out of Egypt? Their diet changed. They were brought out of bondage and put into the leadership of Moses. Uh -huh. Moses led them out there where God could teach them and be trained of God. And they were given new food and they were given a fresh supply of water. The manna that fell down out of the sky from God and the water that gushed out of the rock. Paul said that that, that divine provision was Christ. Uh -huh. That rock was Christ, right. Paul said. Yeah. 
people of God were put on a special diet because uh -huh. they had special things to do. Yeah. They had special needs, uh -huh. and God had a, something special for them. It's a different kind of work, and they, they needed a food that would support that kind of thing they That's were doing. Right. The manna that Moses gave us was just a foretaste uh -huh. of the true bread, yeah. was the implications of what Jesus said in John 6, uh -huh. of which Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. Yeah. Your fathers yeah. did eat man in the wilderness, yeah. and they are dead. Yeah. The bread which come down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. Yeah. How can the people of God be weak and yeah. powerless uh -huh. all the time? Huh? All the time. If Jesus claims to be who he is, yeah. Yeah. you see, a 16th century poet said, The hungry sheep look up and are not fed. Even those who be don't belong to the people of God, they know something just ain't right mm -hmm. in the professed church. I mean, the outsider can see yeah. what's yeah. going on. Uh -huh. You know, how is it that a feet, sheep be not fed when God has given his son to feed the world? Well, you know, our calling this morning is twofold. It's long, I know, yeah. but it's twofold. One, we're calling the people of God yeah. to, to, to make to God's attention. Mm -hmm. And also, we're calling men out. Yes, we are. We're calling men out, mm -hmm. men who are not feeding the sheep mm -hmm. or giving them something else. We're calling them out this yeah. morning, brethren. Yes, we are. <clears throat> we want to call them out by name. Mm -hmm. We're saying you're not right. That's what we're saying. All these organizational and administrative types who manipulate the things of God and God's people to their own design, we just say they're not right, okay? Practically, and I'm going to say this to you, brethren, practically all the men that came before us, even our noteworthy scholars, what we like to quote, nearly all of them have paved the way to what we got. I'm serious. We've only got a few men, look back, and we only got a few men who preached a message that was uncompromised, okay? Now, <clears throat> we're calling men out. Uh, Jeremiah, let's, let's skip to this. Jeremiah was in the prison of the court when he received the word from the Lord, okay? It came to him as a, thus saith the Lord. Now, <clears throat> when you're doing pretty good, <clears throat> when you're on the mountaintop, and you can see for miles and miles and the blessings of God are on your fingertips. Perhaps you can get by on less than a dust, saith the Lord. But let me tell you something now. When you're in the fire of affliction, when you don't think you can stand another day, I don't think I can hear another word, you need a dust, saith the Lord, you see. Now, it won't surprise you then when I tell you that Brother Jeremiah got 150 dust, saith the Lord. Because <laughs> you know what kind of ministry he had. Now, add another 50 to that where it said, dust, saith the Lord of hosts. Okay? <clears throat> he needed that. <clears throat> To stand up in the face of these men. Did yeah. We need a thus saith the Lord in this world today, yeah. brethren. <clears throat> we, uh, and the word is not singular. I, I, I know you know this. It's plural. He's the Lord of hosts. Okay. Uh, the people of God, we need to hear those things. Uh, and I wanted to say it again. If we just got too many, too many not telling men what God is doing, like the thus saith the Lord. So, we just got too much of what they can do and what we can do together. But we need to hear what thus saith the Lord. Yeah. God asked Ezekiel straight up. Mm -hmm. Straight. Son of man, can these bones live? <laughs> Ezekiel answers, oh Lord, oh Lord God, yeah. thou knowest. Yeah. <clears throat> Ezekiel said that because he knew he didn't know enough. Yeah. I don't know enough. When it came to things like that, <laughs> I don't know anything, yeah. Lord. <clears throat> We're all in that camp of the unlearned. Uh -huh. We are. That's a large camp, a multitude who do, of those who did not know. One God, and just to emphasize it, you remember when God said, I know with the much regret, my people do not know? Uh -huh. Yeah? The animals have got more sense about what's going on around them than yeah. my people do. That's what he said. And uh, <clears throat> that's why we got a dust saith the Lord. I'm going to have to give my people a dust saith the Lord. Yeah. And so now, all you got to know is what God said. And just give the people, you ain't got to have all these kind of things that people tell you you got to have when you get up here. Just get up here with some dust, saith the Lord. Amen. All the people Amen. of God, that's what they need. Uh, God put a word in our mouth, and the woman said to Elijah, yeah. Now by this I know that thou art a man of God, and the word of the Lord is in thy mouth is truth. Yeah. Therefore, we tell men, <clears throat> we tell them this is our job. We say, here, e. The word of the Lord. Yeah. Here's one of those, thus saith the Lord God of hosts. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire. Mm -hmm. And these people would, and it shall devour them. Yeah. <clears throat> Why isn't the world on fire? Mm -hmm. 
huh? for the Lord. Well, that, maybe because preachers have been preaching a compromised message. Right. Uh, now, I'll tell you, this started about the second or third century. Sorry. What we're going to do? Well, we're going to wait on the Lord to deliver us. And we're going to be sure when we preach and talk, it's going to be dust said the Lord's. And we're going to wait for his son from glory. <clears throat> now, brethren, it, <clears throat> a final word, and and I'll, I'll be through. But, see, that's that's what we want to focus on the mo this, this morning. That's why we've all gathered here. Got up this morning, it was cold. And we all came here because we know we're going to hear a dust said the Lord's. I'm going to pray. And then yeah. Sister Tasha yeah. is going to lead us to some songs. Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your great provisions of salvation. We uh, pray that you'd help us to proclaim this best we can. Christ, and we pray, amen. Amen. amen.